So people can adopt a dog or a cat, make that appointment, come in and just have that check for peace of mind. And, uh, but yeah, it's so much comes with it. I really tell people that if you found a puppy on the side of the road who's not spayed or neutered, it's gonna cost a lot at your vet, your, at your wonderful local vet. So come on down, all of this is included in our adoption. Yeah, it's it cost cool. me probably four times or five times as much when we got Amanda to, to get her as it did for me to get Andrew when we rescued mm -hmm. him. Sure. And so I really, I just cannot tell people what an awesome you know value it is and you're saving the life of a pet. Yes. And those VIP dogs, I mean, let me tell you, Andrew was three years old when we got him. Best, best, Aww. best dog. I mean, he just was so thankful to mm -hmm. be in a good home and just, he really appreciated, you know, he'd had a little bit of a rough life, his young life. And so the the appreciation factor is just totally different. You know, Amanda, mm -hmm. we called her the princess. <laughs> and, um, you know, she was my baby. And, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'll, there will never be another Amanda. But I will tell you that Andrew had a little bit different um, appreciation for um, for what we gave him, um, you know, because he was a rescue dog. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So. It's amazing to see that appreciation. Mm -hmm. Now, to talk to me a little bit about what should people do if they have a pet and no longer they can no longer care for it. I got a sure. Facebook today from somebody who was like, "Oh, help us! This this mom dog and the puppies mm -hmm. are going to be put down because the people can't take keep them." And and so, what what happens if we have a situation like that? Sure. Well, what I always advise people, and I've told personal friends this too, as well as everyone else I talk to, try to try to use your own connections. See if you might know someone. So if, even if that's sending out an email or a plea on Facebook or Twitter or wherever just to say, hey, is anyone looking for a pet? I happen to know about this pet or these pets that might need homes, and no pressure, but here they are, mm -hmm. just to try. Um, I even uh, had a wonderful friend who was able to place, um, a, a help place another animal through her veterinarian, uh, because the veterinarian right. said, well, I know somebody who's looking for that pet. So you can try that. Um, also, the SPC of Texas, of course, does. We do accept owner-surrendered animals, as well as we transfer animals in from animal control and other mm -hmm. groups like that. But um, you know, people people surrender animals to us. We see a variety of reasons. Uh, we'll see everything from they didn't the, the person or people they didn't understand what the commitment was. Mm -hmm. So it was just too much of a commitment, or they didn't realize that um, they may not have understood that adopting a puppy, or, or maybe they found a puppy on the side of the road and they had it for a year, and they said we just can't do it anymore. There there are tons of reasons why just. People realize, hey, I'm, I'm not able to give this pet the care it deserves, so let me take it to a place where I know that I can, that they can help that pet find a home where it's going to get the, the attention uh, that, that it needs. And, you know, we have a lot of abandoned animals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I live in the Bishop Arts District, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people, for whatever reason, come dump their animals down oh, there. And it's, you know, probably because there's so many great people in Bishop Arts that will take them mm -hmm. in. But, um, you know, mm -hmm. I want to encourage people, instead of doing that, where an animal can be injured or starve or die, they're not, you know, they're not, a, they're not used to that kind of environment, mm -hmm. to actually either try to find a way to adopt out the animal or sure. surrender it to SPCA sure. because y'all can take care of it. And just, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a quick call. So it's, um, it's, it, it's easy to do. And like you said, it's very dangerous on the streets for, mm -hmm. for pets. Uh, there's there are cars that we think of, but also and even in Dallas there are wild animals. There are raccoons and coyotes and uh, I would, I it's would, yeah. I would like to ask her one question because I sure. have a, I have a debate with a friend sure. that has feral cats that are always having babies, and I go, we'll take it to the SPCA. Oh, they'll kill them. Mm -hmm. And so I think there sure. is, please, I'd, I'd like to hear what absolutely that, that seems to be something that people will think that they're taking them there. That's you know that is that they were not going to find a home. Sure, no, that's that's a great question. Um, a lot, and a lot of people don't realize this. The SPC of Texas many years ago used to be what we called open door. And so anyone could bring any animal at any time all day long, it didn't matter. And what we found with that is it was impossible. We just didn't have enough resources to be able to make the promise that we are now able to make. Uh, starting several years ago, we promised the community that we do not euthanize animals for lack of space, mm -hmm. and we do not have time limits. So, That's good to know. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so what we do is that we call our, we don't call ourselves no kill. We call ourselves reservation required. A lot of people might want to call us no kill, but I really do like the reservation required name because I think it's more descriptive. What we do is when someone surrenders an animal, they call us, they, we make an appointment for them to come in, they bring their pet in, and then at that point we take this dog or cat and we give them a health evaluation and a behavior evaluation.
So we're able to right then and there tell the person or the people, yeah, this, this animal is a candidate for adoption program or here's why not. Mm -hmm. um, a veterinarian would have to sign off on a euthanasia for something like if a dog was trying to bite everyone in the room, if an animal has a contagious illness that we are unable to treat. Um, or a, an Ill, a, well, a contagious illness or an illness we are unable to treat, we want to be really honest with people and say, here's, here's what we think is going to happen right now. Do you need to foster people then? That people need to, we, I mean, if they can't, if the people can't find them, if they're not adoptable? Or absolutely. We always, we, we couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. And our foster volunteers are so fabulous because, yes, once these animals come in, many different there are many things that we can treat in a foster home environment because the animal is able to go to a home mm -hmm. and recuperate so much better mm -hmm. in someone's home and so yes they're able to go um, they'll come through the system oh definitely and uh, this is you know moms with their litters and of course we spay mama and then we spay the babies right right <laughs> and spay or neuter the babies and um but yeah it, it, people don't know that about us so i really i'm glad to to talk about that too does anybody um here in the audience have any questions for maura if not, I've got more. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, so, you know, you were talking about your volunteers. How mm -hmm. do people get involved with the SPCA? Sure, it's actually really easy. On our website, we actually have a form people can fill out online. That goes straight to our volunteer uh, folks, our volunteer coordinator, and she's able to then go through, call the people back, set up a time for training, come in. We, um, What we like to do with our volunteers is we have uh, scheduled volunteering, which I think it's great for everybody. I mean, you can know, you can, everyone can expect, okay, I've, I've scheduled myself to come in on Friday from 4 to 6 or Saturday from 10 to 2, uh, and it works with everyone's schedule. So, and we have specific duties, everything from walking dogs to brushing cats, just hanging out, we call that TLC. And everything, al also taking animals to, for example, our uh, North Park adoption event at mm -hmm. the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, just everything in between, anything from office clerical duties where you're not working with pets to volunteering where you're working only with pets. So yeah, and, and fostering, foster volunteers are a huge part of that. So foster volunteers can take home those moms and babies or the animals recovering from surgery, regardless of what the surgery is. Animals who have mild medical conditions that we can treat will send home with all the medication. So And, and that mm -hmm. website is spca.org, SPCA.org, you're right. Great, great. That's it. Thanks.